The red-winged blackbird is my favorite bird. I think stitching is one of the most relaxing things that you can do. I spend a lot of time on the bird today, attaching him, stitching his wing. And I talk a lot about my approach to creating a stitched piece. So come and join me with your thread and needle. Pull up a chair and relax as I stitch through from start to finish. Let's get started. So I've taken a few solid colored fabrics and I've placed them on a piece of felt. This piece of felt is about five inches square. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tack it all down with some basting stitches. I'm taking larger stitches on the back than I am on the front. And then I'm gonna bring out my freezer paper. And that's going to be what I'm going to use for my bird shape. So now it's basted into place. I'm going to bring out my bird shape. I've chosen this bird from my six bird set. And I think it's going to go really nicely on here. And I want to make it into a red winged blackbird today. So what I've done is I've traced this shape and I haven't used the heat erasable pen. I've used a regular pen and just traced it. And then I'm gonna iron it onto fabric. So if I had the heat erasable pen, it would disappear. I don't want that to happen. I've picked this piece of dyed fabric. It's kind of a heavier fabric. And it's got several different shades in it. And it's kind of reminded me of the Red Winged Blackbird. If you see them really close, you can see that they have lots of colors on them and they're not necessarily all black. So I thought this would be a nice piece of fabric to use. So I'm going to iron this onto this piece of fabric and then I'll cut it out. So here it is ironed on. I should mention if you haven't used freezer paper, there's a papery side and there's a shiny side. So the shiny side goes down onto the fabric, the paper sides up, and that's the side that you trace your shape onto. I also have scissors that I use for paper and scissors that I use for fabric. So I'm using my paper scissors to cut this out. And that's because cutting paper with your fabric scissors can dull them. I've sped it up here, but really I just take my time so that I get really nice crisp line. So these pieces of fabric, I'm gonna save. You just peel off the freezer paper. And I'm probably gonna be able to use that piece of fabric in another project. So I will save those and put them aside. And then I will peel off bird so it has nice, clean edges, and at this point it's not frayed or anything. And I'm liking those colors in that. So now I just decide how I want to place the bird. This little bird's tail is going up, and there's this little piece of the wing that'll help me know where I want the wing to go, but if I didn't want it, I could just cut that part off and that's nice about these is the flexibility that you have. So I'll just decide the orientation that I want it to go and then I'll stitch this little guy down. I'm taking this pearl cotton size 12 and I'm putting it against my red wing blackbird. See if I think it's too dark or if I think it's just right. Mm, I think it's nice. So I'm going to take an arm's length with a thread. I'm using a gold eye milliner's needle and it's a little bit longer than some other needles. And I'm gonna use that tying my quilter's knot on the end of my thread. And I'm going to use my thumb to hold this little bird in place. I think I'm gonna start right in his back. 
I want to go fairly close to the edge here. I'm going to do a running stitch. This fabric that the bird is made of is like a muslin. It's a heavier cotton than the fabrics that are beneath it. I'm going to grab my thimble, my pushing thimble, and my pulling thimble. And that's because this fabric's a little stiffer than what's comfortable without a thimble for me. I'm going to take one stitch in the beak. Right at the very end. And another one just at the very end of the beak where it meets the rest of the bird here. The reason I'm taking one stitch at a time instead of several and stacking up stitches is because this fabric is a little bit thicker and I'm concentrating on holding the bird in place. I haven't fused the bird on. So the only thing holding the bird on while I stitch is my thumb. So it just feels better to me to take it slow, one stitch at a time. And take one stitch across that flat part of the tail And then my last few stitches to finish joining. Okay, one more stitch. I'm back where I started. Take my thread to the back. Flatten everything out. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to knot my thread. Now this time I have taken a heat erasable pen it's very hard to see, but I've marked the shape of my wing and the shape of the red, orange, yellow part of the red winged blackbird on here. So that's going to be a guide for me. And the first thing I'm going to do is outline the wing. So I've tied a new knot in this same thread and I'm going to do the same running stitch to outline the wing. And then I'm going to turn and go back and fill in the stitches, the spaces in these stitches I've taken. And now I'm going to turn and go back and I'm going to stitch in the spaces. This stitch I could have done with a back stitch. There's lots of different ways to stitch a sort of solid line. This is a combination of it being easier for my hand given the thickness of this fabric and wanting it to look a little bit feathery. So one of the decisions that I'm going to make as I stitch this is how heavily I want to stitch on this fabric. For sure I want to add the Red Wing Blackbird's bright marks here. And how much stitching I want to do in the area that's black, I'm going to kind of decide as I go along. I think what I'm going to do right now is stitch this other profile piece of the wing sort of upper part of the wing and I'm going to take some stitches here at the end to keep this little tip of this wing from 
curling up. This is more the shape of the wing. This line down here is almost like a shadow that's gonna be there. And I could continue this line here just to make it a little more clear what that line is. That's a good start. So I've chosen colors for the red wing I'm going to start with a red, it's an orangey red, and then an orange, and then a yellow fading to a pale yellow. I have threaded up two strands of the red, and I'm going to start stitching. One of the things I notice about the Red Winged Blackbird is that it has a lot more orange than it has red. I don't ever go for photorealistic anyway, so I'm not worried about it. It's just something that I'm aware of and I notice. Now that I've put a few stitches in the top part of the wing, I'm going to use this red to move it down on this one side. And then that's gonna be all the red that I'm gonna use. Okay, I think that's all the red I'm gonna use and I'm gonna come back in with some orange and see how it looks. This is fairly thick fabric. I'm going through here and so you can see I'm it's not really gliding through the needle I'm taking one stitch at a time and really kind of pushing and pulling so so it's a different type of stitching that I'm doing here that I will be doing in these areas where it's, the needles gonna glide through a lot easier these are very sort of deliberate stabbing stitches to get this effect that I'm wanting. I think it's really interesting how when you see these threads side by side that they're very different. And once I start stitching them on this black, you see them side by side. They really blending together. Now I could stitch really heavily in, try and fill all these black areas and make a really nice gradation of color. And that's one option. Or I can leave these little black areas, which right now I'm really liking. It's really showing off the stitches. It's giving a kind of a folksy feel that I like. I tend to prefer more of a folk art feel in the things that I do. Just looking at my wing here and deciding how far I want this orange to come down. I want it to come down about where it is. And then I'm going to fill in this part. And then the yellow is going to go below it and uh, so the, the largest area of color is going to be orange on this wing. I'm going to try and keep this sort of a, a rounded crescent shape, kind of an upside down U shape by the time it's finished. Every red winged blackbird is slightly different in the way that their the red part, the red-orange part of their wing shows up. For some it's really, really prominent, and others you can only see it when they're kind of spreading their wings a bit. So I can't really go wrong, especially because I'm not going for accuracy. What I'm going for is something that I find pleasing. 
trying to not make too even of a shape. I wanted the top round part of the wing to be an even shape, but I want this one, to, this shape's down here to be a little, a little more uneven. I think I'm liking the way that's looking. I'm thinking about maybe switching now to the yellow and yeah, I think I'm going to switch to the yellow because I have the two shades of yellow so I can put in some of the darker and then a tiny bit of the lighter. It might be just enough. So I'll knot off here. I'm going to bring my thread up just up above where the wing is so there won't be a bump from the knot when I'm doing more stitching. There's my brighter yellow color. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of the lightest yellow. So here's my lightest yellow color. And I'm going to stitch a row across. Sometimes the tips of this colored part on the Red Wing Blackbird almost look like they're white. So that's why I've picked this paler yellow color. Sort of hint at that. And it adds to this gradient of color that I've done here. I like the way that looks. I think I'm gonna hop over here and just add another couple of stitches and then this wing's going to be finished. So I'm going to keep these colors and use them in the other stitching. And I'm going to choose some more colors as well, but I'm definitely going to bring those back in again. And I also want to come in with my pearl cotton size 12 again. Just add a little bit more stitching to the bird. So I've added some stitching lines to the wing and I've thickened this line underneath. And now I'm just adding a few stitches in this darker gray color. So it's a little lighter than this. And I'm gonna just put a few stitches in the beak. Now I'm gonna add an eye to the bird and then I'll move on to stitching in the background. So here's my little eye of the bird. Now I'm going to do some stitching in the background. I've brought in this color and this color to go with the fabrics that I have. I'm going to come through with some stitching. You can see right here, there's a little part where there's been some pulling from stitching the bird. You can see that felt underneath. So I can take this other piece because it's only loosely tacked down and try and pull it over to see if I want to make that fit that way. I could also add another patch of fabric. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to see what happens when I start stitching and just take it step by step. I'm starting here. I'm going to stitch down this piece of fabric. So I don't generally have a plan when I stitch. I just look at what's happening and I go where my eye goes and I add stitching where I want to add stitch. And everything evolves from there. I'm going to remove my basting stitches. So this piece of fabric is attached to the beak here, but the rest of it is free to move around. I'm gonna see if I can angle this a little bit, tilt it a bit, and bring this piece down. 
I still want some coverage here, so we'll see how much play I have. It certainly covers this lower area, but it looks like if I wanted to sort of pull this piece to cover, then I'd need to add other pieces here. So this could be covered just with stitching. And that's another option. So I'm going to audition a piece of fabric and see what I think. And if I don't like that, then I will do some stitching to cover that black area. Another color I've thought of bringing in here is an orange color because of the orange on the wing. And I think I like the addition of this color. So I could add a piece here. Might be nice to add a little block something like this. Then the other option is to add the orange with the edge and then tack these new pieces down. This is one of the reasons that I like using basting stitches. If I had fused or glued these pieces down I wouldn't have had the option of lifting them up and shifting them slightly. So now I've tacked these down and I'm still able to, if I change my mind or want to do something different before they're stitched down, I can take them up. So now that I've stitched these, what I want to do just uh, for myself visually to be able to picture the whole piece is to flip it over and see what pieces are hanging over the edge of my felt and do some trimming if I think it's necessary. So I can see here that this piece is going up and off. This piece is, and also on the other sides. So I'm gonna do a tiny bit of trimming. These pieces are still gonna shift and move. But what this does is, as I'm stitching and looking at the piece, it gives me a better idea of where my edges are. And it helps guide my decisions about my stitching plan and adding more patchwork or adding more stitch. So that's a bit of a clearer idea of what's happening with the size of my piece. So now I'm going to come back in with this same fuchsia color that I'd stitched here and I'm going to add some stitching around this area that I've just been working on to, to cover. With these first few stitches I've done, I've pulled this fabric over and I've covered the area I want to. And visually and texturally, I can see this nice line that's being created right along the edge of the bird. And I have some of that here. So I'm thinking about continuing this down for a ways. Because I'm liking the way that that looks. So this is an example of what I'm talking about when I say I don't have a plan and I make decisions as I go. If I had planned this out, I don't think this is something I ever would have thought of. Well, that's one of the things I really like about stitching in this kind of intuitive way is that the piece is con continually evolving. So now I'm starting to go off of the edge of where I would stitch this fabric down because that's not my goal. And my goal now is to make marks. So now I've added the stitching all the way around the bird. And I'm liking the way that that looks. Before I do more stitching, I'm going to draw in the legs of my little bird. And that'll give me an idea of 
where I'm going to want them to be so that any stitching I add down here, I'm, I'm able to keep in mind these little legs. This is the heat erasable pen. Mm, that's kind of my idea of how I want the legs to be. Let's see, that might end up being, I might like that better. That's why a heat erasable pen is good. I've just stitched with that same black pearl cotton size 12, some legs. And this little line I want to erase because I decided to move the leg over a bit. So I'm just going to bring in my little iron and erase it. This is my Clover mini iron and it's really handy for little places like this where I want to just hit one spot with heat. Now I'm coming in with this green color that matches fairly closely this green. I'm just going to add some lines underneath the bird's legs. So here's my first pass with this green on the bottom, giving some grounding to the bird. Now I'm going to hop to another area. So I've brought in this other color. It's more of a brownie orange to add to these pieces. And I've had the stitching there and it's subtle. And I don't want to forget that I have this other orange that I have used in the wing. And so I think it might be nice to add it in the places where I have the orange as well and to blend that and to add it in some other places. So really my process is to look at the piece and do what I call the wandering stitch, which is really just straight stitches in different lengths and different orientations. And I'm wandering with my needle as I go around and I make marks. And sometimes I will make a line and hop up and make another line. And I just keep moving around the piece, adding these marks. And then when I see the marks I've made, then that gives me ideas about adding more marks. And so it's just an additive process where it adds on itself. And I continue to add different colors and different types of stitches in terms of length and orientation. And some stitches are more spaced out and other stitches are closer together. And so that gives some variation. So my process now is to just continue with this and I have all of my colors in front of me. And so I can add them. I, I see them and I can add them when I get an idea about where it might be a nice place to add some marks in that color. I brought in that orange a little bit here and I added two more pieces of patchwork. So now I'm just going to continue adding more stitching until I feel like I have enough and that it's done. And then I can think about what to do with the border. So I've done quite a bit of stitching and now I think I want to come in again with this black pearl cotton that I've used to stitch the bird down and I'm going to add some stitches in the other direction. So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to do running stitches. So I've done some lines here and taken fairly large stitches. Now I'm going to go back and go the other way. So I filled in in between the lines that's really added something, I think. Now I'm just going to keep stitching and keep adding. So I've added more stitches in this darker turquoise color. It's added a bit of depth underneath. And of course, you can see a big difference from adding these black stitches all the way around. I like how that blends with the stitching here. And one option is to go around again with another round of blanket stitches to make it thicker. I kind of like the spacing of these because it mirrors so closely these black stitches. I also like that I haven't done stitching on the body of this blackbird. And it's a nice contrast to the wing and the heavy stitching around it. And it also reminds me of folk art. One of the things I really like about folk art is that it really has a flat look. It's not three-dimensional, it's two-dimensional. And to me, that's just so charming. And I think that that is really reflected here by this plain duller fabric and the stitching that has a little bit more of a shine to it. So I'm thinking this is done. 
This piece may look really nice on one of my canvases. This is a five by five canvas. And what this does is turns this piece into wall art. So I have my matte gel medium, which in this case is gonna act like a glue and an inexpensive paintbrush. And now I'm just going to glue, put glue on both sides, more on the canvas and less on my stitched piece. I don't want it to soak through. I'm just gonna put it on the edges. Now I'm gonna press it under a book and let it dry. So here it is, it's dry, it's flat. It has this sweet little canvas behind it. So now it can hang on a wall. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. There's so much color. And there's my favorite bird, the red-winged blackbird, right in the middle of all this riotous color. I hope you enjoyed stitching along with me today. Maybe you can pick your favorite bird and stitch it on your favorite colors. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.